can count on my steel. So, you've entered the complex world of Gloomhaven and are eager to set off on your first deadly dungeon. But wait, you can't figure out which of the six starting characters to pick. Afraid of getting lost in the rules and making mistakes? Don't worry, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the best of Gloomhaven. This is Crimson Blades and today we'll be counting down our picks for the best starting class for new players in Gloomhaven. This list is numbered from worst to best and is based on how easy it'll be for players just starting out in Gloomhaven to get out there and start monster killing. There are no spoilers, and our picks apply to both the tabletop and digital versions of the game. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to our channel for more cool Gloomhaven content. Alright, ready to find out who's number one? Let's take it away! Number 6. The Mind Thief How to describe the Vermling Mind Thief? Try a tribal psychic humanoid rat who is somehow both the physically weakest and the most potent melee attacker at the same time. The Mind Thief clearly does not fit any traditional RPG roles, making her one of the most interesting and challenging characters to play right out of the box. With excellent initiative, great looting, a solid perk deck, and a respectable starting hand size of 10, an experienced player can build a highly damaging deck with multiple disables. Buffed by rotating augments, which add a permanent attack bonus and insane psychic powers, Mind Thieves can stun multiple enemies in a row without using any lost cards at level 1. She's also the fastest leveling character, giving you access to more powerful attacks earlier than other classes enabling you to destroy weaker enemies outright. However, in order to maximize and sustain this incredible damage output, Mind Thief players need to get up close and personal with much bigger monsters. They'll have to work very hard to stay alive. This can involve switching between crowd control, evasion, invisibility and big damage to avoid getting killed. You'll need to think like a rat. Fight quickly and scurry away! Even then, with the lowest health of all the starting characters, you can find yourself close to death most of the time, with no room for error. Excellent card management skills are required for survival. Mind Thief cards do scale very well, but deck restructuring skills are needed to allow for the most versatile play. Psychic abilities, while being very cool, require tactical knowledge about enemy and ally positioning. She's also a summoner which adds an added layer of complexity to the gameplay. Final verdict? The Mind Thief is a powerful mixed range and melee summoner who customizes her unique attacks. While it can be fun to manipulate the minds of your enemies and allies, the combination of melee with low HP, not to mention the augment system, evasive gameplay and complex combos make the Mind Thief the trickiest class overall for new players to start with. Number 5. The Spellweaver the Orchid Spellweaver is the mage class of Gloomhaven. She specializes in strong area of effect damage spells targeting multiple enemies. Coupled with fast leveling, high movement speed and the ability to use burn cuts twice, Spellweavers when played correctly can annihilate roomfuls of enemies. At higher levels, you gain access to some of the most powerful attacks in the game. However, along with the Mind Thief, the Spellweaver has THE worst health of any starting character, making her the proverbial glass cannon. Tactical positioning is crucial for the Spellweaver to maintain line of sight while staying safe. Without invisibility, she is prone to taking heavy damage. Spellweavers rely heavily on element manipulation, which most other starting classes can ignore. Knowing when to use the right elements can win you the battle and requires careful planning ahead. Learning to use elements early on can be challenging for players just learning the game. You also start with the smallest starting hand size of 8, making low stamina and early exhaustion a huge problem since most of your hands are lost cards. But here's where Reviving Ether comes in. One of the best cards in the game, this ability allows you to recover all of your lost cards 
and takes the complex hand management puzzle of Gloomhaven to a whole new level. While Reviving Ether gives the Spellweaver more flexibility than any other class when it comes to lost card cycling, the timing of when to play it is tricky, encouraging a bolder and often more cavalier playstyle. Be warned though, losing Reviving Ether at the wrong time, including accidentally during a short rest, could mean losing your Spellweaver altogether. Final Verdict Spellweavers are great area of effect range damage dealers who can turn elements into deadly weapons. At higher levels, they have some of the most powerful cards in the game. However, the precise element juggling, low health, tactical positioning, and unique style of burning through all your cards for reviving ether require advanced hand management skills and careful planning, which new players may find difficult to do on their first playthrough. Number 4, The Cragheart The Savas Cragheart is the most flexible starting character. He has great stamina with a starting hand of 11, allowing you to experiment with lost cards early without too much fear of exhaustion. With higher health, this class can also take a punch. Often played as a ranged attacker, Cragheart with the right equipment can tear through mobs of shielded enemies with multi-target splash attacks. Cragheart can combine the abilities of healing, melee, tanking, support and range damage to allow for a very versatile and customized playstyle. While excelling at being versatile, this feature is also the Crackheart's biggest problem. A jack of all trades but master of none, he's decent at everything but he doesn't excel at any one thing. This more fluid and flexible playstyle, while appealing to some, may put off newer players seeking a clearer and more defined role in the party. Cragguards utilize obstacle and element manipulation, such as creating obstacles and smashing enemies with them. While this may be fun and unique, it takes getting used to and risks being underutilized by inexperienced players. Interestingly, the Cragguards splash damage affects both allies and enemies, making him the only starting character who can cause friendly fire. Baby. This collateral damage can be extremely dangerous to low HP party members like the Mind Thief or the Spellweaver. Lastly, the Cragheart is slow. Slow to level up and slow to move across the board. You may often find yourself as the last man standing. Not from being tanky, but because you were the last one to get to the room. Final verdict? The Cragheart is a solid choice. No pun intended. A true jack of all trades, encouraging a versatile style of play with good stamina and reliable attack cards. Players who develop a style and rhythm of their own can fine tune the Cragheart to greatness. However, new players can run the risk of low damage, poor obstacle manipulation, slow movement and uncontrolled friendly fire if they don't switch gears quickly enough to adapt to the situation around them. If you are enjoying this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for your support, and now on with the list. Number 3, The Tinker. The Quattral Tinker is the support healer of the starting classes. While playing a healer may not be every new player's cup of tea, the Tinkerer makes up for it with surprisingly powerful multi-target attacks such as Ink Bomb and Flamethrower even at level 1. The Tinkerer boosts your party survival by buffing allies and weakening enemies with potions and other crazy contraptions such as traps, stuns, and summons. Well, you probably want the accessory kit, holster, oh, yeah. bandolier, Baby. silencer, mm -hmm. loudener, uh. speed cocker. Ooh, I like the sound of that. And this is for shooting down police helicopters. Oh, I don't need anything like that. Yet. The Tinker is extremely versatile and can be used as a healer, a support class, or a damage dealer, depending on your party's needs. When the rest of your party is getting clobbered, that one perfectly timed heal, distracting summon, or early stun can make the difference between losing and winning. Among all the support characters, the Tinkerer, with his wide range of attack cards, has the best potential for offense. Utilizing a more aggressive attacking playstyle with lost cards should keep you leveling up fast. The Tinkerer can easily alternate between two distinct playstyles. Whether you want to turn him into a healer or a damage dealer will depend on you. The Tinkerer's perk deck is average, and at higher levels, there's a lack of truly great cards, meaning the class doesn't scale very well. However, 
The ability to mix and match 12 starting hand cards will ensure consistently solid gameplay throughout each dungeon, not to mention being able to take lots of card losses. Tinkerers can even become emergency tanks in the last room if the situation ever arises. Final verdict? The Tinkerer is a highly versatile ranged damage dealer with heals and lots of utility cards which will keep your party alive. He is a lot of fun to play and excellent at lower levels although he does not scale well when leveling up. The Tinkerer offers a solid experience all round. The fun of mastering core game mechanics early in order to crush dungeons may result in a better initial Gloomhaven experience for new players. On your feet, you lazy mongrels. Number 2 the Scoundrel. The Human Scoundrel is Gloomhaven's rogue archetype. This class has the best starting perks out of all six characters, with plenty of damage dealing cards and the rare ability to remove all negative attack modifiers. The Scoundrel's sole damage output is one of the highest in the entire game, making her a valuable staple of most large parties. And large parties are where the Scoundrel shines, because large parties let her pull off her crazy boss killing combos. Her early game movement is second to none, with multiple low initiative high movement cards that allow her to race across dungeons and sneak up behind her targets for those non-loss instant kills. You'll be killed if you return. I'm warning you to watch your comments. Our country is a peace-loving democracy. Of course it is. The window! I don't believe it. Thermoptic camouflage. She's going to be the primary looter in early scenarios, with effective loot cards allowing quick leveling, easy XP, and early access to better gear. On the flip side, the scoundrel's stamina is weak with a small hand size of 9. Exhaustion is a real problem if cards are lost too early through damage. Unlike the spellweaver, scoundrels cannot regain all their lost cards. Stealthy play is essential on the front line because the scoundrel cannot tank. Another issue is that most of the scoundrel's immense damage dealing requires enemies to be either alone or adjacent to her other party members. Strategic planning is required regarding enemy and ally positioning. Although trying to gain adjacency bonuses can be harder in smaller parties, her excellent movement lets her be almost anywhere she needs to be and should not be too difficult for new players to figure out. Final verdict? The Scoundrel is a fast-moving single-target melee attacker who deals boatloads of damage. She suffers from low stamina and requires strategic thinking when it comes to crucial tactical positioning. That said, She's one of the best looters and boss killers in the game, with minimal complicated mechanics, early initiative, excellent speed, fast leveling, and great compatibility with multiple other party combinations. Her straightforward and aggressive playstyle makes the Scoundrel not only one of the best starting classes for new players, but a candidate for one of the best classes in Gloomhaven overall. And number one, The Brute. Want to destroy the first dungeon you see after putting down that rulebook? Look no further than the Inox Brute. As Gloomhaven's classic tank, his playstyle is, by far, the most straightforward. There is no element manipulation, no complicated hand management, no stealth required. Being the first one through the door, the Brute simply smashes, stalls, pierces, and disarms anything in the way. Brutes excel at taking and dealing tons of damage. His starting hand of 10 cards, high HP and shielding make him a solid tank, with many cards focusing on damage mitigation. Players can easily switch focus from tank to frontline damage dealing, killing enemies before they can attack the squishier classes. Brutes can boost their movement with several high move cards and also pull off one of the most effective combos in early game by trampling multiple foes. This aggressive playstyle can be invaluable in allowing your allies to take control of the battlefield. The Brute levels quickly, and at higher levels, instant kills and near invulnerability to low level damage become real possibilities. The Brute's perks are inconsistent. Heal cards are lacking and card initiatives are in a middling range. Maybe the biggest criticism of the Brute is that it is a two-dimensional class which doesn't require too much thinking. While hard to argue with that, it's not enough to take away from how solid the class is as a whole and how much downright fun the Brute is for a new player. Final verdict? 
The Brood is a melee damage dealing tank who specializes in demolishing enemies while taking all the punches. He pairs well with just about any character making him a staple of most parties regardless of size. New players will be able to customize his abilities without being bogged down by the game's more complicated mechanics. His simple playstyle might leave experienced gamers yearning for more, but in the end, there is no easier class for new players to start blasting through dungeons with than the Inox Brute. Do you agree with our list? Who do you think should be number one? Let us know by sharing your comments below. Also, a huge shout out to Crimson Blades member VG for winning Gloomhaven Digital's one year anniversary contest. VG designed a boss monster which was selected by Isaac Chargers himself as the winner. We're very proud of you and will have a video on Direct to File coming up in the near future. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome Gloomhaven content. Thanks very much for your support and hope to see you next time.